Obadiah was written at about the time of the Babylonian capture of Judah in 586 BC. It was right about that time. There are 12 men in the Tanakh with the name of Obadiah. But we know nothing about this prophet except his name, Obadiah. That means servant of Yahweh. Now, Obadiah's prophecy concerns the judgment of Edom for its treatment of Jerusalem. Now, Edom, once again, it's the name given to Jacob's brother Esau and his descendants. We read, that goes way back to Genesis 25, starting at verse 23. Yahweh said to her, two nations are in your womb, and two people shall be separated from your body. And one people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. When her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Now the first came forth red, all over like a hairy garment, and they named him Esau. Afterward, his brother came forth with his, with his hand holding on to Esau's heel, so his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was 60 years old when she gave birth to them. Then as we go to Genesis 36, verses 8 and 9, so Esau lived in the hill country of Seir. Esau is Edom. Now, there is a direct equation for you. Esau is Edom. You hear Edom, think of Esau. These then are the records of the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in the hill country of Seir. You see Edomites, you see that? Think these are the people defending, uh, descending from Esau. <clears throat> The Edomites had a perpetual hatred for Israel. And Esau had that at the very beginning. In Genesis 27, starting at verse 41, So Esau bore a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him. And Esau said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are near, then I will kill my brother Jacob. Now when the words of her elder son Esau were reported to Rebekah, she sent and called her younger son, Jacob, and said to him, Behold, your brother Esau is consoling himself concerning you by planning to kill you. And he's been planning on it ever since. He's been, he's been wanting to do this for a long, long time and still does to this day. Now, Edom, the nation, descended from Esau and had its capital in Sila, which is uh, the city of Petra, if you've heard of the city, the rock city of Petra. We're going to take a look at it here in just a minute. Obadiah 1, verse 1. You can just, don't even say Obadiah chapter 1. There's just one chapter, so. Obadiah 1, the vision of Obadiah. See, it doesn't say son of who. You know, normally it's Hosea, son of whoever. Well, we have Obadiah. Thus says Adonai Yahweh concerning Edom. We've heard a report from Yahweh, and an envoy has been sent among the nations, saying, Arise and let us go against her for battle. Now, Edom didn't know it, but Elohim stirred up the hearts of the nations to go against Edom. Edom, when Jerusalem was destroyed by Babylon, Edom celebrated. They had a huge party, and they did some very bad things. And they're going to pay for this glee that they had. In Psalm 137, verse 7, we read, Remember, O Yahweh, against the sons of Edom, the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, to its very foundation. They were cheerleaders for Babylon and the destruction of Jerusalem. Verses 2 and 3, Therefore, or, Behold, I'll make you small among the nations. You are greatly despised. The arrogance of your heart has deceived you. You who live in the clefts of the rock, in the loftiness of your dwelling place, who says in your heart, who will bring me down to earth? Now, Edom's main city was Petra. Uh, the, the name is Selah in Hebrew, but it, it means rock. And you'll see, you see why it means rock? This was a rock city. It had very narrow gorges, which were its only access routes. Now, this was a chief trade route between Asia and Egypt, and it made it a very prosperous little nation. And we can see from that text we read that, that Edom was a very prideful little nation. There's those narrow clefts that you go through to get there. It'd be a cool place to go visit, wouldn't it? Verse 4. 
Though you build high like the eagle, though you set your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down, declares Yahweh. Edom was as strong as an eagle and built in an inaccessible place like the stars. It's way up there. Verses 5 and 6. If the thieves come to, came to you, if robbers by night, oh how you'll be ruined. Would they not steal only until they had enough? If grape gatherers came to you would, you, would they not leave some gleanings? Oh, how Esau will be ransacked and his hidden treasures searched out. You know, usually uh, when thieves come, they only take what they consider to be valuable. Grape gatherers, they leave some gleanings. But when Edom gets ransacked, everything's going to be taken. Everything. The hidden treasures were probably what was hidden in those caves. You know, uh, I guess you, you don't take those houses with you because they're just, the, the mountain itself, the rock mountain is the house. Everything that was in there, everything taken. Verse 7. All the men allied with you will send you forth to the border, and the men at peace with you will deceive you and overpower you. They who eat your bread will set an ambush for you. There is no understanding in him. Edom's allies are going to lay uh, an ambush, ambush for them and drive them to their borders and out of the land. And the alleged allies here, we're not told exactly who they are, but history tells us more than likely it was the Arabs. And it was the Arabs who absorbed these people. Okay, The Arab people, they're made up of a conglomerate of, uh, of peoples. And we'll take a look at that here in just a minute. Verses 8 and 9, will I not on that day, declares Yahweh, destroy wise men from Edom and understanding from the mountain of Esau? Then your mighty men will be dismayed, O Teman, in order that everyone may be cut off from the mountain of Esau by slaughter. Edom was known for its wise men in the city of Teman, and they'll all be destroyed or taken captive. <clears throat> we read in Jeremiah 49, starting in verse 7, Concerning Edom, thus says the Yahweh of hosts, Is there any way in wis any wisdom, is there no longer any wisdom in Teman? Has good counsel been lost to the prudent? Has their wisdom decayed? Flee away, turn back, dwell in the depths, O inhabitants of Dedan. Dedan, Dedan. Where's Dedan? Where's that? Anybody remember? Arabia. For I will bring the disaster of Esau upon him at the time I punish him. If great gleanings came to you, would they not leave gleanings? If thieves, thieves came by night, they would, only, they would destroy only until they had enough. But I have stripped Esau bare. I have uncovered his hiding places, so that he will not be able to conceal himself. His offspring has been destroyed along with his relatives and his neighbors, and he's no more. Leave your orphans behind, I'll keep them alive, and let your widows trust in me. For thus says Yahweh, behold, those who were not sentenced to drink the cup will certainly drink it. And are you the one who will be completely acquitted? You will not be acquitted, but you will certainly drink it. For I've sworn by myself, declares Yahweh, that Basra will become an object of horror, a reproach, a ruin, and a curse, and all its cities will become perpetual ruins. Basra is in Edom, by the way. Verse 10, because of violence to your brother Jacob, you'll be covered with shame and you'll be cut off forever. The Hebrew word for violence, Hamas. Isn't that interesting? There it is. And now, keep in mind, in the Hebrew, the CH and the H sound is the same thing. It's a, <laughs> I can't do it good. <laughs> I'll just say Hamas. Okay. Has a guttural sound to it. <clears throat> because of their continual harassment and hatred of Israel, Edom was destroyed forever as a distinct people. And this, once again, <laughs> because of Hamas to your brother Jacob, you'll be covered with shame, you'll be cut off forever. That's what's going to happen to Islam for the same reason. Verse 11, On the day that you stood aloof, on the day that strangers carried off his wealth and foreigners entered his gate and cast lots for Jerusalem, you too were as one of them. The sins of Edom are listed here in the next few verses. Here we're told that Edom stood by and watched while Judah was plundered. 
Verse 12, do not gloat over your brother's day, the day of his misfortune. Do not rejoice over the sons of Judah in the day of their destruction. Yes, do not boast in the day of their distress. Edom not only stood by and watched as Judah was plundered and looted, but they rejoiced over their distress. They rejoiced over their destruction. In the book of Lamentations, now, Lamentations, that's another writing by Jeremiah. It was written after the destruction of Jerusalem. And what, does a, what is a lamentation? It's a sad thing. Lamenting. They're lamenting over the destruction. And they say in Lamentations 4, verse 21, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Eden, who dwells in the land of Uz. But the cup will come around to you as well. You'll become drunk and make yourself naked. In Ezekiel 35, verse 15, As you rejoiced over the inheritance of the house of Israel because it was desolate, so I will do to you. You will become a desolation, O Mount Seir, and all Edom, all of it. Then they'll know that I'm Yahweh. Verse 13. And you know, it's another lesson to be had here. Don't rejoice over the trials and tribulations of a brother or sister. Okay, don't ever do that. They don't deserve it. Verse 13, do not enter the gate of my people in the day of their disaster. Yes, you do not gloat over their calamity in the day of their disaster. Do not loot their wealth in the day of their disaster. Edom not only gloated over the ransacking of Judah and Jerusalem, they took part in the looting. <clears throat> Verse 14, do not stand at the fork of the road to cut down the fugitives. Do not imprison their survivors in the day of their distress. The Edomites helped round up those of Judah that got away. It's... Uh, it's sad. They're trying to get away from the sword of Nebuchadnezzar. They stood in the road and blocked the road so they couldn't leave. Verse 15, For the day of Yahweh draws near on all nations. As you have done, it will be done to you. Your dealings will return on your own head. Well, the day of Yahweh will come upon all nations, he says. As for Edom, it's going to be done for them just as they did to Judah. No, I'm missing verse 16. Oh, I didn't want to miss verse 16. What is it? One verse gets raptured out of every chapter, it seems. There is a rapture. See, we've all been saying all along there isn't. Someone asks, is there a rapture? Yes, Obadiah chapter 1, verse 16. <laughs> I'll read it to you. Now, I'm going to do this without my reading glasses on just because I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Now, let me put, him on, put these on. <laughs> <laughs> because you drank on my holy mountain, all the nations will drink continually. They'll drink and swallow and become as if they never existed. Elohim says, all the nations will drink of that cup of Elohim. That's speaking of the last days, Okay. And the prophet Jeremiah lists these nations. And it's a very interesting list. It's in Jeremiah 25, starting at verse 15. For thus, Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel, says to me, Take this cup of the wine of my wrath from my hand and cause all the nations to whom I send you to drink it. And they shall drink and stagger and go mad because of the sword that I'll send among them. Then I took the cup from Yahweh's hand and made all the nations drink to whom Yahweh sent me. Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, its kings and its princes, to make them a ruin, a horror, a hissing, and a curse, as it is this day. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, his servants, his princes, and all his people. What religion is Egypt now? It's Islamic. And all the foreign people, all the kings of the land of Uz, who was from the land of Uz? That was Edom was one of them. All the kings of the Philistines. Who, who occupies that land now where the Philistines were? Palestinians? The Arabs? 
Even Ashkelon, Gaza, Ekron, and the remnant of Ashdod, they still have those. Edom, Moab, and the sons of Ammon. Who absorbed the people of Edom, Moab, and the sons of, Adam, of Ammon? The Arabs. All the kings of Tyre. All the kings of Sidon, all the kings of the coastland and beyond the sea. Who absorbed the kings of Tyre, the city of Tyre? The Arabs. And Dedan, who's Dedan again? Arabs. Tima, Buzz, and all who cut the corners of their hair. And all the kings of, what's that word? Arabia. Arabia. And all the kings of the foreign people who dwell in the desert. All the kings of Zimri, all the kings of Elam, all the kings of Media. And all the kings of the north, near and far, one with another. And all the kingdoms of the earth, which are upon the face of the ground. All the kings of Shishak shall drink after them. You shall say to them, Thus says the Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, Drink, be drunk, vomit, fall, and rise no more because of the sword which I'll send among you. And then will be if they refuse to take the cup from your hand to drink. Then you shall say to them, Thus says the Yahweh of hosts, You shall surely drink. For behold, I'm beginning to work calamity in this city, which is called by my name. And shall you be completely free from punishment? You will not be free from punishment, for I'm summoning a sword against all the inhabitants of the earth, declares the Yahweh of hosts. Therefore you shall prophesy against them all these words. You shall say to them, Yahweh will roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He'll roar mightily against his fold. He'll shout like those who tread the grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. A clamor has come to the end of the earth because Yahweh has a controversy with the nations. He's entering into judgment with all flesh. As for the wicked, he has given them to the sword, declares Yahweh. Thus says the Yahweh of hosts, Behold, evil is going forth from nation to nation, and a great storm is being stirred up from the remotest parts of the earth. And those slain by Yahweh on this day shall be from one end of the earth to the other. They shall not be lamented, gathered, or buried. They shall be like dung on the face of the ground. Crow bait. Yep, that's it. Crow bait. Going back to Obadiah, verses 17 and 18. But on Mount Zion there will be those who escape, and it will be holy, and the house of Jacob will possess their possessions. Then the house of Jacob will be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, but the house of Esau will be a stubble, and they'll set them on fire and consume them, so there will not be, there'll be no survivor from the house of Esau, for Yahweh has spoken. You know, in the last days, there'll be those on Mount Zion who escape. The house of Jacob, which is Judah, and the house of Joseph, which is Israel, will be in existence as they are now. And there'll be a fire and a flame against their enemies. We read in Zechariah 12, starting at verse 6, In that day I will make the clans of Judah like a fire pot among pieces of wood and a flaming torch among sheaves. So they consume on the right hand and on the left all the surrounding peoples while the inhabitants of Jerusalem again dwell on their own sites in Jerusalem. Yahweh will also will save the tents of Judah first in order that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem may not be magnified above Judah. In that day, Yahweh will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And the one who is feeble among them in that day will be like David. And the house of David will be like Elohim and like the angel of Yahweh before them. And it will come about in that day that I will set about to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. You're about to see that happen. That's going to happen very, I don't know when. I don't have a date. Well, I do, but I can't tell you. Esau will be a stubble. Of the Edomites who escaped, of the Edomites who escaped, they eventually became Arabs. You don't meet an Edomite anymore, do you? Nope. Verse 19, Then those of the Negev will possess the mountain of Esau, and those of Shephelah, the Philistine plain. Also they'll possess the territory of Ephraim and the territory of Samaria, and Benjamin will possess Gilead. Now, um, the, uh, the borders of Israel on that day will be the same as described in Ezekiel 47 and 48, which is this right here. It's, that's roughly what the borders are. And if you look at them side by side, it says they're going to possess uh, Gilead and Edom 
So it's going to go out here like this does and possess that area up there. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but it's bigger than that. It extends further out. See, this it, it, it's going to extend here. This one extends out into that area. And then I got to uh, read you verse twenty. And the exiles are the hosts of the sons of Israel who are among the Canaanites as far as Zarephath, and the exiles of Jerusalem who are in. Uh, Sepharad will possess the cities of the Negev. So that just finished describing that, that area here that we're talking about. Who is that in the green to the left, the bottom left? Uh, that's Egypt. Verse 21, the deliverers will ascend Mount Zion to judge the mountain of Esau, and the kingdom will be Yahweh's. Now, the deliverers here, that's the... Uh, that's the term Yasha, it's saviors or the avenged will judge the mountain of Esau, which is Islam. In Daniel 7, verse 27, then the sovereignty, the dominion, and the greatness of all the kingdoms under the whole heaven will be given to the people of the saints of the highest one. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom and all the dominions will serve and obey him. And also Revelation 5, verses 9 and 10 and they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals. For you were slain and did purchase for Elohim with your blood men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And you've made them to be a kingdom and priests to our Elohim. And they'll reign upon the earth. <clears throat> and that's how it's going to be. The fall of Edom took place. And then the judgment of Esau is yet to happen. The full judgment. Esau representing Islam. Any uh, questions? Any thoughts? What are we going to study next? What are we going to study next? Amos, Obadiah. Anybody remember? John? Yeah, very good. We're going to go in line. Why not? You want to go in line? Yeah. Jonah? Jonah it is. What's after Jonah? What? No, oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you hear that? No. The whale was after Jonah. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, you said that um, that Elohim would destroy all the all the people that were against uh, Israel, basically. Well, if Obama said no, he's against Israel. Yeah, he, he, he is. He said he was going to take. Side with the sure. The he wrote about it in his book. If Israel attacks him, he wrote it. He wrote about it in his book. If things got bad, he'd go on no, the side of the Muslims. <laughs> yeah. After that is Micah. Bet you never studied Micah, have you? Oh, you're missing it. Good stuff in Micah. So this is a whole section of of prophets that were ignored, I think, by modern. Uh, well, by modern Christianity, for sure. Even scholars, I think, uh, most of them ignored it, and it's a shame because these things are loaded. Okay, um, let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Heavenly Father, we, uh, we thank you for, for the word you've given us once again, and we, we pray for your grace and mercy and that your name be glorified. This we pray as your humble servants. Amen.